So when we talk about punishment reducing um, aggressive behavior, uh, corporal punishment, again, something that oftentimes is uh, viewed as uh, pretty controversial in some communities. Um, and again, it is intended to cause pain, but not injury. That's a, an important aspect of it. <clears throat> That's different from, again, when you get into physical abuse. And the purpose here is correcting behavior. As a parent, um, your children, you know, again, probably are going to make you mad sometimes. But you always want to ask yourself, you know, what is, if you have to use cor corporal punishment, and I'm a proponent of it, I also believe that it should be used sparingly. If you're doing it too much, and, uh, you know, you need to look at some other uh, parenting strategies and some other things that might be going on in that regard. But um, you always want to ask yourself, if you do um, have to use corporal punishment, you know, what is the purpose of it? Again, trying to correct some behavior or you're doing it just to express your anger. Corporal punishment is common throughout the world, but um, it definitely uh, uh, varies in cultures um, in terms of the frequency, frequency in which it's used. <laughs> but we have to be careful because the research has shown that it can be associated with uh, antisocial behaviors. But again, if this is, if you overdo it, want to use it like spices, if you have to use it at all. Ideally, you never have to put your hands on your children. There may be again, like, I was not one of these, uh, Michael. But there are, again, some children that are really well behaved. and never have cause to you know, um, have their parents respond that way. Because another danger in it, and we've seen research on this in terms of the correlation between um, if you were abused as a child and whether or not you become an abusive parent, there's a strong correlation there. And it suggests that, you know, what we uh, know about, you know, most behaviors, that aggressive behavior can be learned. <clears throat> As always, there's different research that's presented to um, illustrate this um, information. And a famous research study was done in 1961 with Bobo the doll, where essentially um, there was an experiment and they had a group of adults playing with Bobo the doll and they started beating the hell out of Bobo as uh, little kids observed. So then when children started playing with the doll, what do you think they did? Bobo continued to catch some shots. It was a rough day for your boy Bobo. And honestly, that's a small, um, isolated experiment. <clears throat> this is um, a controlled experiment that's different from a natural experiment, which you would see um, in everyday life. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's consistent with the cycle of violence. So Ryan, when you talked about earlier, you had mentioned a cycle. That's, there's a lot of merit to that in terms of, you know, uh, the behaviors that we see. If that's how we see men have communicated to women, whether it be in our neighborhoods, whether it be in our videos, whether it be with our politicians, because again, even with the rap videos, and there's somebody again, who's, you know, obviously like, uh, of the hip hop generation and grew up in it, it's really important to understand that, you know, when like, um, cause the older, the older generation oftentimes will like, you know, critique uh, the misogyny and rap music. And um, it should be critiqued. There's some things again that um, I think, you know, just go way over the top. But it's really also important to understand that, um, you know, all that stuff didn't just start with Snoop Dogg and all that. Like, you know, we, we had parents and grandparents that, you know, we had been observing for generations to say nothing of like, you know, they may not have had like, you know, uh, videos where James Brown and Sam's Cook was calling women hoes and stuff. But we saw Superfly. We saw the Mac, like the, the, the Mac is sampled in the music all the time, man. You know, if y'all haven't seen the Mac, y'all should really check that out. But all those classic black exploitation films where again, this, you know, the misogyny and aggressive towards women in particular 
has been something that's been part of our society for a long time. And it's related to here when we talk about a culture of honor. Keep in mind from our discussions in sociology, what we mean by culture, values, traditions, norms that are passed down from one generation to the next. So this notion of aggress aggressiveness and when we're supposed to use aggression, that goes way back. So Ron, to your point about the cycle, what we have to do is, make, is inform ourselves and make sure that we're knowledgeable about the society and culture and we can create new aspects of the culture. We don't have to continue to behave this way just because this is how the culture has been, you know, for X amount of years. Yes, sir. Um, I just thought of like a, 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 let's call it, not necessarily a culture conflict, but it's a conflict in and of, in and of itself. Um, when I was in uh, pre-K, yeah, when I was in pre-K, it's crazy how I remember this. My mom's, Always, oh, we had that talk before the first day of school. You know, I was kind of an advanced kid, you know, like as far as learning, that wasn't a problem. And she was like, you know, just keep your hands to yourself, you know, behave. And I know she told me, she made, the one thing she made sure she told me was that you cannot hit girls, right? That's the main thing. So then, you know, say a week or so go by, I come back with like some more scratches and she like, what happened? I was like, a girl hit me. So she like, did you hit her ass back? And I'm like, no, you told me not to. And it was like, you supposed to hit her back, da 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 da. But you know, as a kid, it's kind of like, but you told me I, I'm not supposed to ever. So like, right. how, like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. And then society looks down upon that as well. Like, it, oh, as a dude, how could you? You know, you're 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 soft for hitting a female. But truth be told, as a dude, you know, again, I'm gonna keep my hands to myself with everybody. But if you, I'm not just gonna let you keep hitting me in my face, and you know you going to town i'm just no like you i'm going to deter that force with force absolutely yeah absolutely absolutely now excellent points on all fronts like um you know so for one um that's a funny example like so one is one of the things that like um constantly fascinates me as a sociologist and it's particularly looking at the sociology of children in terms of like it's so many norms that we all take for granted now but it's so many, it's a lot of conflicting on and, and trying to learn this stuff as a young person, it can be very difficult and challenging at times. You get all these different rules and stuff and process and all this stuff. Again, you live in your life, so you don't really think of it this way, but it'd be, you know, like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to do that. Wait, I, mean, I shouldn't do this, but in this situation, it's okay. You know, so great, no, great example. That happened to one of my little cousins uh, one time where um, my, my cousin, her son, was told the same thing, you don't hear girls, and then he had all these scratches. And um, in this case, his sis, his older sister was uh letting him have it. She's like, why? She's like, why would why is he like, you know, why you got all these scratches? She, you said I ain't supposed to hit her. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. So yeah, great example. But as men, like what it speaks to, like, and I think this is true of people in general, but you're right. And men were told tough from a very early age that you have to stand up for your honor. So like, like dudes beginning, like, you know, so again, women will fight, um, you like, you know, and be really aggressive. Our fights be so stupid. And like, we be like, you know, just on dumb stuff, but it be, cause we can't like let nobody punk us. Um, you know, and, and, and don't get me wrong. That is important that me, you know, not as Dr. Muhammad, just as a man, I believe it is important to stay in your ground and be able to hold some basic integrity about yourself and some things that you just should not allow as a man. That doesn't mean that I'm right in feeling that way, but it is how I feel. Um, but I do think that sometimes, you know, we go a little bit too crazy with it and, you know, we respond with aggression. Like, you know, um, a lot of these shooting deaths in places like Chicago, Detroit, New York, Philly, It'd be over stuff that, you know, like, you know, a lot of times it'd be over some drug money and that's instrumental aggression. I'm not saying that that's okay, but that comes with the game. But when it's just stupid stuff, like, you know, uh, dude looked at me wrong, he stepped on my shoes, like, you know, those are things that, you know, we want to give our lives for, or you want to spend 25 to life in the cage for. But the... Imagery and I and I, I've dealt with this before, like recently, like um, 
it was a situation like uh, we, when we talk about being in the rush and stuff. Um, we was out and about, and somebody had said something cross to my girl. And it still bothers me now, even though she's like, look, it was, and, and she was right, like, walking away and being civil was the right thing to do. It felt bad. I can't lie. I do deserve an ass whooping, and it, it, it doesn't fully sit right with me, even to this day, that I didn't give it to her. But there probably would have been worse consequences. We get we both get locked up and, and for what, Kareem? Is really that serious? No, it probably wasn't, but it would have felt good at the time. But we gotta be again, those inhibitors, especially as we get older, Ryan. It ain't just okay, y'all didn't fought and broke it up. Is no, you you have committed assault and you're going to prison. And now you got to explain this to all your employers and stuff for you know the next forty years and everything. Why are you coming into the interview with your cornrows and stuff? They're like, oh my god, he has an assault on this on this record. Uh, Jim, can you come in here? Uh, I may need some security. And this just little rhyme, man. You know, good friendly dude. But that one moment of not being able to control, you know, um, your instincts can lead to some, you know, challenging um, episodes. But and it, them jumpsuits not cool. cute. Say it again. Them jumpsuits not cute. I work at the prison, so I see some of the inmates, and I'm not cute. Right. <laughs> I'm saying right. That's not that ain't, This is not a good look. Stay out here with us. So please, but you know, and again, it's a thin line because there are going to be times where people really deserve to get it. You got to be cool. And again, you always want to understand where the aggression is coming from. This is really important because not only can aggression, you can harm somebody that you love that you don't really want to harm, but you also can, you know, like I said, put yourself in a bad position. So it's important to understand the roots of your aggression. It's important that you should understand the kind of things that are going to trigger your aggression. Things get too crowded. You in the club, you having a good time? It starts to get a little bit too crowded. Like, now nah, I, I got to go. I don't respond in these situations. Somebody's going to push or shove me. They're not going to mean it, but you know. I don't respond well in those. And I, me, Muhammad, I'm okay, but I'm just saying, you know. But with frustration, again, that's the biggest culprit of um, aggressive behavior. And every human being gets frustrated. Uh, frustration is uh, you, you have certain goals, but you're not able to, um, you're blocked from achieving them. And that's going to lead to some aggression. Not just with you, not just with me, most human beings. Now, what you want to be mindful about is not displacing your aggression. You're frustrated about something at work. You come home and you're still frustrated and you take that frustration out on your child and you're hitting them for what somebody else did. So that's why, again, as adults, introspection, we talked about early, that early in the class, to really take a step back, Maisha, and think about, okay, why am I feeling this way? Like, and again, like, it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be frustrated. It's natural. Sometimes you might want to give yourself a little bit of a buffer, like tell, you know, like we talked about, you know, you got a, a, a frustration is having a certain goal and that goal being blocked. My goal when I'm on the road is to get to point A to B as quickly and as safely as possible. Daily, when I would be coming to Allen, it's all types of clowns blocking that goal, driving like they ain't got nowhere to go. And like, you know, and I'll be trying to get my road rage under control. I've gotten a lot better, but that stuff is always going to piss me off like stupid drivers. It just is. Look at what you're doing, dog. 
get out the way. Like, why why don't people down here understand like how the fast lane works? Like, oh God. Anyway. So I oftentimes will start my days frustrated as hell. But I would make it a point to get to work a little bit early to give myself some cool down time. Again, keep this in mind for yourself. Um, it, w w after a long day of work, <clears throat> um, when, when I was married, like I would, uh, I would take a, a quick train ride, wifey would pick me up and then we would ride back together. She oftentimes would want to like, you know, talk about throughout the day. And I'm like, hey, I need a minute. Don't be getting me into all this stuff because I'm frustrated. I'm not frustrated with you, but I'm going to displace all this frustration over here into this space. So again, being mindful about that. And then also there can be things that you can do to reduce your aggression. That, um, <clears throat> you know, some, some people, again, like, you know, where um, you've seen couples and stuff like that, where they have punched a pillow and stuff, or, not, or cut a knife through a pillow and say, oh, my God, it feels so good. Because sometimes it's just like, look, I got this frustration that's in here. I need to put it somewhere. Otherwise, it's going to harm somebody I don't want it to harm. So, so, so psychologists oftentimes will give that to you and allow you to be able to displace in a healthy way because you got to get that stuff out. If you don't do it, sorry, if you don't do it yourself, Ryan, it's going to come out naturally in some unhealthy ways. Now, frustration, it doesn't always produce aggressive inclinations that people, again, can uh, <clears throat> use their frustration and displace and uh, funnel it elsewhere in a way that does not result in aggression. <clears throat> but a lot of times, so like, you know, again, where, you know, um, hate crimes and things like that, where somebody may be frustrated about something, you're frustrated because you lost your job, your girl broke up with you. And now you want to go target this particular group. Let's, let's go shoot up a whole bunch of Asian people because I'm feeling some kind of way. And again, I know many of you want to go into the mental health profession. And one of the things that you know you want to be looking out for is giving people spaces to express and channel their frustration, which we all have in ways that can be healthy and just being able to talk out some of this stuff. Because sometimes in talking, I, I know, again, we've all been here as humans. In talking something out, you may see, Michael, how crazy you sound to you. Like, I know I've definitely been in a situation like that. Like, damn, like when I actually say this out of my mouth, I guess, man, right? I guess she was right. I guess it do sound a little crazy. Fuck. Okay, well, I'm glad we had this talk. Thanks, dog. I was getting ready to do some wild stuff. 
So just being able to give people that space to do that, I think uh, hopefully we can have more of that in our society. But again, we talked about the culture and how a lot of times people are not necessarily uh, socialized to communicate their feelings in this way. Again, we talk about the variables uh, affecting aggression. One of the big ones is heat. talked about this before, how more violent crime occurs in the summer and years that are hotter. So how like um, in Do the Right Thing, for example, you know, where all the aggression that ended up uh, culminating in the film. Hmm. All the, uh, I'm sorry, all the uh, aggression that culminated in the film in many ways was, was also triggered by um, the heat in the city as well. The heat was almost another character. We'll be, gotta be mindful about this again as we see the planet itself is getting a lot more warm. Scientists estimate that this is gonna cause 22,000 additional murders and 1.2 million more aggravated assaults. Again, we look at correlations in science and we see here the correlation between heat and aggression. A couple more things before we break for the day. So again, uh, insult or social rejection. And again, feeling disrespect. And this is important, like the, the person may not necessarily have to be disrespected. It's just they felt disrespected. And social rejection, again, like um, when you see some of these uh, horrific school shootings and other behaviors, you know, a lot of times, you know, it comes from people that, you know, frankly, just feel really socially isolated. And while that by no means excuses or rationalize their, uh, well, it doesn't excuse their behavior, it does help us to rationalize it. We talked about earlier, <clears throat> and I'll close on this note, uh, how violence plays a role, or I'm sorry, how comparatively more violent our society is compared to other countries and societies. And it's not because, you know, a lot of people say, hey, the music that they listen to in the movies and all the violent video games. No, none of those are factors. Well, I won't say that they're not factors. They're not the main explanatory factors, because I'm sure you all are aware all of those things um, are also present in every society throughout the world. 
all the video games that we play over here, they're playing in Japan, they're playing in Switzerland, they're playing in South Korea, they're playing in Finland. The little kids ain't going over there and shooting up the whole school. All the movies and stuff that's premiering and stuff over here, they got over there. The main difference is it's a lot more guns in our society. And you all have probably seen this, hopefully not too much, but you probably have seen this yourself. <clears throat> How much more aggressive a person becomes when they got a gun. Be making, uh, you know, hard rocks out of all types of cowards. And again, people that hunt, for example, where they understand the damage that guns can do and uh, the pressures of life, statistically speaking, research has shown they're less likely than non-hunters to associate hunting uh, with aggression. We'll leave it there for now. Listen up, listen up. We will not meet for class on Thursday. We will not meet for class on Thursday. We will not meet for class on Thursday. We will resume with this and transition into the next chapter on Tuesday. Make sure you continue to follow your syllabus and see where you should be at in the reading. And please get started on those papers if you haven't done so. As um, always, today's lecture will be uh, is being recorded, will be posted on uh, the course uh, page shortly. So I have a wonderful day. All right, Dr. Muhammad, did you, um, just a quick question, mm -hmm. on the email that I sent you, did you email the account C email of the recommendation? Because the email on the actual application, that person is out of their office. Okay, I, I haven't sent it yet, so I, uh, send me another email, or if you, if you haven't done so, and let me know exactly who I need to send it to. Okay, I will. Sure, but I'll send it in a little bit. Okay, thank you. Not a problem.